one of the things we wanted to do was uh, we wanted to give some ideas to all of our members with respect to some opportunities that might be emerging after COVID is over, uh, or at least once our communities are open, but really looking to some, some industries we may not have traditionally thought about. And one of these is the film industry. And so today our topic is around the film industry and hopefully in hearing the content today, you'll be able to think about your own region and maybe how you can take advantage and get involved more actively in the film industry locally. So we've got three people that will be presenting today. Uh, Luke Azevedo is with Calgary Economic Development, and he is actually just coming off of another webinar, I understand. So as soon as it will, we'll see him log in shortly. But he's uh, with the Film TV Creative Industries for Cal Calgary Economic Development, but he works throughout the province, so many of you may know him. Uh, Lisa Craig is a manager of creative industries with Calgary Economic Development as well, and she will be presenting with Luke. And thirdly, we also have Robert Hilton, who is a business agent. He's also with the Directors Guild of Canada. He's with the Alberta District Council. And given the fact that Luke is just running a little late off his webinar, I think we're going to start with, with Robert. Uh, before he gets started though just so you know this is being taped because we, we give it to our members for download later or you could share it with with others if you want or refer to it we'll also have everyone's contact uh, their websites and their names so you can download that you'll get an email tomorrow uh, Nancy Toombs is on, our, on the line as well Nancy works with me and Nancy will be curating the um, chat box so if you have any questions as we go, just feel free to put them in there and we can talk about that when the three presenters are done. And uh, if you can just leave yourselves on mute, that would be great. Uh, so without any further ado, I will ask uh, Robert if you can unmute yourself and talk about uh, your perspective on Alberta's film industry. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, I had some um, uh, slides, but they're uh, in with um, uh, Luke and Lissa's presentation. Um, Hi. <laughs> Hi, Lissa. Hi, I'm trying to share, and it's just saying one participant can share at a time. How's that? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. So take it away, Rob. Uh -huh. Um, locations. So um, uh, a quick uh, introduction uh, about myself and again thank you everyone for allowing uh, me to uh, present uh, on behalf of uh, the Directors Guild of Canada Alberta District uh, Council. Uh, my uh, prior career to being uh, the business agent here in Alberta is I was a location manager for uh, 25 years. So um, I ate, slept, and breathed locations um, and have been a part of um, some of uh, the biggest um, uh, projects that have happened here in Alberta. Um, I love what uh, I do and um, I think we have an opportunity here in Alberta to um, really uh, take advantage of what we have. Um, could I have the next slide, Lisa, please? Um, this quote comes from, uh, I think most people know who uh, David uh, Schwimmer is. Uh, he's uh, the actor that plays Ross um, from Friends. And um, uh, this quote is really sums it up. Um, a lot of a movie is locations, frankly. And um, uh, everyone um, uh, 
forget that, you, you know, we're so focused on uh, watching what is happening uh, in front of us and the actors that we forget about the background. If you're not in a studio where your background has been completely built and um, under the control of uh, the production designer and director, you're out looking for that location. This location here is from the uh, third season of Fargo. And um, I was working on uh, that as the location manager. And it was, we need a waffle hut in the middle of nowhere. Um, you can imagine, um, if that was presented to you, I don't know of a single waffle hut in Alberta. Uh, probably the closest one I know of is probably somewhere down in North Dakota. Um, I explained to our uh, production team that we did not have a waffle hut. Oh, okay, well then how about a, um, you know, a diner in the middle of nowhere? Uh, not what we do in Canada, right? Like uh, it's, it's just not the way it is. So we ended up finding the absolute perfect location and then we built the Waffle Hut. Um, that is something that um, we are um, very prone to doing in um, our industry is if we can't find it, we'll build it. So we don't give up on uh, anything. When we see the list of locations and it's like Waffle Hut, we don't have a Waffle Hut, go somewhere else. No, 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 no. Let us show you where we can put the perfect Waffle Hut. You can have your perfect Waffle Hut. Um, Lisa, can you move, uh, Lisa, to the, the next um, slide, please? So, um, a, a big thing is what to expect from um, a film crew. Again, this is third season Fargo. Uh, this is Main Street in Fort McLeod. Um, we take a lot of people to make a project work. We go from anywhere a commercial, uh, probably, you know, uh, 20 to 30 people, all the way to a feature film where um, it will take a crew upwards of 200 people to uh, make it work. Um, the thing you can always expect um, as a um, property owner or a jurisdiction in which um, a project is going on is change, change, change. Um, it is constantly changing. And um, I cannot stress that enough. We think we have everything figured out and we spend a lot of time doing that um, in prep. And then everything gets moving and something happens, right? And it can be the smallest um, thing from what we're experiencing right now. A crew member gets sick a very important crew member, or God forbid, it's the key actor. Well, everything that we now planned that is supposed to happen within perhaps the week that you're dealing with now has to be completely changed. Anything that has that actor in it, you can no longer shoot. So um, it throws you into that, um, uh, that position of let's make it happen, right? And that's where 
we, um, the next, you know, the control is that we need as much control of our environment um, to uh, manage and be able to deal with that change. Now, um, control does not mean handing over the reins to us, but it means um, working in conjunction with us. So it's a relationship that every production needs to develop with the jurisdiction that they're working in, um, a very tight relationship so that when presented these problems or um, the change uh, that everybody knows what is happening and we have the ability to deal with it. Um, you see in this, this slide here, you know, a large number of vehicles. This is nothing. This is um, just on Main Street. This is the camera. In behind the, um, uh, the buildings on the right hand side, um, Fort McLeod has uh, an area where um, there is a large parking lot for uh, public uh, when they come into the town. Um, while we were filming there, we took up that whole parking area. We had on Fargo uh, upwards of 50 work trucks and depending on the day with the uh, number of uh, extras, upwards of 200 crew cars. Our work trucks, when parked nose to nose, were just under two miles. It is a circus. We call it a circus. And the reason we do that is because it looks like the circus coming into your town. Um, there, um, we always have to find parking nearby. So we work very much hand in hand with uh, the uh, jurisdiction um, in which we're filming on figuring out how we uh, do that. Um, I can tell you the excitement that builds from having a production like Fargo, or um, as we did last summer, um, uh, Rust City, um, which um, it's got massive amounts of followers. It's a very exciting thing to do. Um, it will bring a area together. Um, Fort McLeod, it brought everyone together. It, it, it had to be a team um, uh, effort from uh, all of the, the city's um, uh, employees to uh, business owners, to the community, to everyone. Um, I, you have to work hand in hand for this um, to happen. Um, and then, of course, the, um, the three most, uh, what I think are the two most um, prominent points um, of what to expect uh, is fame. Um, and the fame comes because of the, uh, the press that you get of a large um, production. Um, uh, performing and uh, doing the work in your town and the economic spin-off, the, the benefits. Um, when a production comes into town, they leave a, a lot of money behind. We always try to utilize um, all of the businesses that um, are located there in order to um, uh, accomplish uh, what we need. Um, the final, um, could I get the, the next slide here, Lisa? <laughs> I'm trying, I swear I'm, 
pressing <laughs> the button and nothing's happening. Sorry. Let me try once more. There we go. Uh, this is the the uh, the final slide, um, and what we require. So, from the standpoint of uh, a production, what we require is um, process continuity, um, and uh, all you have to do is look uh, west to BC and east to Ontario. What they have uh, in those two jurisdictions is very strong process continuity. All of the jurisdictions talk to each other. All of them have uh, a virtual identical uh, permit process um, for any production coming in. The, the more that we have uh, standardization and we know what um, is expected uh, of us to do and how to apply for that, the easier and um, uh, the better that producers look and say, okay, we know across Alberta, it's pretty well the exact same, no matter where you go. Um, assistance, uh, that's the involvement of everyone. Um, uh, we really depend on um, as I was saying, uh, uh, the locals, um, also, again, the town or cities, uh, workers, access to hiring. Um, uh, if we need a road shut down uh, or, you know, uh, snow cleaning, whatever, being able to um, uh, make arrangements through the municipality uh, to do that for us. Um, uh, access to the businesses, we um, go out and we introduce ourselves to everyone. And uh, as I said, try to set up as much as possible community support that the community is behind it. Um, if a community is not behind a, uh, a project like this, um, uh, it will never work. Uh, it just uh, doesn't um, work. The, the more you have everybody behind you, uh, the better uh, it runs and uh, the, the more smoothly uh, you get uh, to your end results. And again, location, locations, locations. This picture here, for example, um, this is Fargo. Who would have thought that um, your uh, big empty field in behind your town um, is exactly what a production wants, right? Um, put away all your uh, stereotypes of what you think film wants and open up to that the opportunities are endless and what we're looking for is endless. Um, and uh, that's it. That's my um, uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, Lisa, I guess if you want to just keep sharing your screen and go back to, to Luke's uh, presentation, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, and, and thank you for that. So hopefully those of you, I know, I know this is similar to the tourism industry. It's, it's when you bring that external money into your community. That's when economic development really starts to, to take off. So, I mean, this is such a great tool for communities in Alberta to, to look at and to think about how you can play a role in this industry. Uh, Luke, I know I see you on the line now. So if you want to introduce yourself and uh, share your perspective on the Alberta film industry. Yes, and I'll, I'll start off by apologizing for being late. I was on a, um, on a webinar with uh, Entertainer, Entertainment Partners Canada, EP Canada, which is a uh, large player on the finance side of um, film and television. And uh, we had a webinar with uh, film commissioners from across the country that were talking to, uh, globally talking to the world um, 
about what Canada could offer and um, coming forth as a, as a country and uh, how cohesive we are and how we're working together and then starting to talk about the regions. And uh, a major part of the conversation right now from the perspective of the studios and those looking for locations um, across the world to do production uh, because that anxiety is starting right now. I mean, we're all at, uh, at home or in, in an isolation uh, environment and many folks uh, throughout the planet are utilizing film and television as their means to get through some of the time during the day. So that content consumption is so huge that by the time that we get to a point where we can do some production um, globally, it's going to increase uh, significantly. So we started to talk today about the regions, um, about where there is uh, less opportunity for um, for contracting uh, COVID and a better opportunity to isolate uh, productions in a manner that uh, that create closed sets in in still spectacular looking environments. And so our regions and our our smaller communities are going to play a big part in that uh, as we open up. And um, of course, there's a, a variety of things in play right now that we're waiting on. Uh, first and foremost is that we're we're working as Canadian entities to try to define what Canada sees as the opportunity for opening up um, production. Then we look at the provincial uh, entities and what we need to do individually to do that. Then there's the cities, then there's the unions, guilds and associations, and then overarching everything is going to be the studios. Uh, they will look at what is being offered from the different jurisdictions across the, the world, and then they will identify if they feel that's meeting the criteria for each of the individual studios and then the studios as a as a whole so the opportunities abound um, based on alberta's uh, testing procedures our knowledge of where um, uh, the majority of our covid uh, um, positive folks are and uh, the reduction that's happened the amount that we've uh, gotten over that hump and we're starting to see uh, uh, the majority of our infected folks now recover um, and the numbers staying consistent, we are a location that they're looking at and wanting to understand what our processes are going to be, what our protocols are going to be, and how we can effectively play um, as one of the first locations of choice um, going out. So I think from the perspective of the Alberta uh, film industry and then the Canadian film industry, we also want to have some, want to be cautious. We want to ensure that when we open, we're ready to open. I think that the way that the uh, the sector will transition will be probably commercials to begin with and smaller productions. And as we start, because of the of the numbers that are necessary to uh, to produce those, and then from there moving into domestic production, um, reinvigorating projects like Heartlands, like um, Tribal, like um, Winona. And ensuring that those travel restrictions, uh, those those intercountry travel restrictions, are not playing a part on how we can uh, engage the community and start going. So um, that's why I was late. So I apologize, and uh, we'll start from there. So, Liz, if you could uh, move along to the first slide. Thank you. So, what do we have um, that makes us attractive? Um, first and foremost, within a, a three-hour radius. Uh, you have uh, the prairies, the badlands, um, the mountains, and two municipalities with over a million people, and all of those great communities in between. Um, and so when, they're, when productions are looking at us, they're looking at not only what the cities can do, um, but also what the, the regions can do. And so from, from our perspective, one of the misconceptions is that the majority of production that occurs in our province occurs in the major centers. It's not true. That is where the production originates. It may be where the infrastructure is being utilized, but the, a good portion of our production spend occurs in areas outside of the major cities. So uh, crucial to us is to have the capacity to work in partnership um, with, across Alberta and ensure that, uh, as Rob had mentioned, that we have some kind of a, a standardized process that we function so that when a production company or studio comes into Alberta, they're coming in with the knowledge base that it's going to be easy to work across the province. That once they've uh, implemented it, then they can, uh, they can work in that form. Obviously, each area is going to have its own rules and regulations, but I think when, uh, when Lissa speaks with you after, um, after I'm done here, that she will give you an indication of what we can ensure that you have 
um, so that you can be protected, that your area is uh, monetizing to its best ability the opportunities that come from film and TV, and that the outcomes are a safe and productive um, and enjoyable experience for the community as well as, as others. Um, so some of the credits, I think, if, you, if you're looking and uh, not everyone knows the amount of work that we've done in film and television in this province. Up until a very short while ago, we had more Oscars, Emmy, and Globe and Golden Globe nominations and wins than any jurisdiction in the country. And when you're looking at jurisdictions like British Columbia and Ontario and Quebec that are doing billions of dollars of work, and we are the fourth um, busiest uh, production center in Canada with uh, just under $300 million worth of activity, the quality of the work that's done in this province by our, our folks in front and behind the camera is, you know, it's, a, it, it's what sells us. It's part of what the, the, the process is. Um, the studios are asking three questions. What's your incentives and how competitive are you? Uh, what's your crew base? Uh, not just the depth of the crew base, but also the quality of the crew base. They want to know what you can do and, how, and what you've done. And then thirdly, what's your infrastructure? Um, and by that, that's not just our purpose-built Calgary Film Center, which obviously is a, a great tool in our toolkit, um, or the, the, the film opportunities in, in Edmonton, um, but also uh, what's available in between. I mean, a, a lot of the work is done by moving into an area, setting up, um, you know, creating the sets in, in uh, outside of the cities and then being utilized, um, you know, for a good portion of the uh, of the project, whether it is a, a standing set that stays for a while for a, a, a series or an up and down set that we hope will be maintained by whoever the landowner is um, on a feature film. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty big impact. So, you know, what is our particular impact on rural Alberta? Um, and I think from, um, from the perspective, if we were to look at some of the projects that have happened recently, we won't go back into history because we have 100 years of history in this province in, in film and television. And uh, we're recognized globally as a location that has those diverse looks and the, the people that can make things happen. But one of the, the, um, you know, one of the main components for us is around uh, the impact financially that a production will have on a region. So if you look at Tim Starr, uh, a series, a large budget series that was um, here for two years, um, you know, in Okotoks and, and Cochrane, Mason, High River, Didsbury, Fort McLeod, Lethbridge, um, you know, the spend in these areas is, you know, the direct spend of well over $1.2 million. There is uh, a spend in Alberta <clears throat> on labor that's uh, in the $17 million range and a spend on um, goods and services and products that's another 13 so they're leaving behind 30 million almost 31 million dollars in a six to seven month process um, the other thing that this doesn't identify uh, as we go through some of these is the number of people that they're hiring you know we have a, a sector here that had um, uh, at, at one point last year, a negative hiring possibility. So we were out of crew and they were searching uh, for crews all over Canada to try to accommodate uh, the, the projects that were coming in. And so if you look at projects like Let Them Go, which was a smaller feature, we still look at within the, the, the region, we still look at over a million dollars worth of spend in a short period of time. This was a shorter project um, and a total of, you know, below the line of, of over $12 million. And so these projects come in, they hire locals, they utilize the local uh, support mechanisms, the businesses, um, everything from, um, you know, from buying coffee every day and getting, and getting food and, and utilizing um, hotels and, and the infrastructure to, uh, to shopping in the shops and, and, and putting money on the table for those business owners that they're displacing during the time that they're actually uh, active in the area. Um, Ghostbusters obviously was a huge project for us last year. Uh, this is, you know, just in, in looking at the hotel numbers, um, the, the tourism levy, uh, and, you know, what the vendors in the, in the smaller jurisdictions or smaller areas are, are deriving from these types of projects. It's, uh, it's huge. And again, these are projects that are coming in there and are putting a spotlight on the region are um, identifying the uh, how great of an experience it was for them there and then giving those those areas the opportunity to speak to a global audience 
uh, about what the impact has been and how they reacted to those projects. But then obviously for us, it's another calling card to have people recognize Alberta as a location to come. So what we do is we see this as a partnership. And it's going to even have to be more so now that um, that we're coming out of, uh, you know, we're coming out of isolation and opening up our economy at uh, over the next three phases is how do we position um, industries like the film and television industry that have an opportunity to meet social distancing and all the protocols and start to hire people from potentially underemployed sectors um, across our province who have skill sets that we need in film and television to ensure that we're in a position that we can fulfill the needs of the production. And, and you know, as I said earlier on, and I, I can't minimize this, is the amount of production that is going to be done is going to be massive. And what's going to happen specifically because of the streaming services, which now they all are, by the way, every traditional uh, distributor of, of entertainment product is a streamer. So this has now uh, changed our world. Our capacity to, to consume has grown uh, multifolds and it will happen again. It will continue to do that. So I think two things are going to occur in our industry. First and foremost, they will be re uh, invigorating all of the content that they have um, that's been utilized to this point so that they can maintain their membership and, and ensure that they, uh, they stay viable. Uh, and then secondly, we can guarantee that they are going to see this as an impact point where they will be producing product that should anything of this nature ever happen again, that they have that product um, on the shelves available to them. So it will probably double up. Should the cruise sizes change, should the way that we do business change, what will happen is that will actually also be an opportunity for us. Um, you know, as we start to look at how they, they produce, um, there may be more crews that are necessary in a smaller mode. So we may have larger opportunities to bring people in so that we can train, retrain, or pivot um, those skill sets into film and TV, which I think is extremely important in our province right now. Um, so what are we doing? We're looking right now, we're looking forward. Obviously, we're dealing day to day with um, with our processes around COVID, uh, provincially and and nationally, and then globally. Um, but we're starting to look at very closely of what our uh, rebuild and recovery plans are. And in this province, um, it's a little different than maybe some of the other provinces because we got a triple hit. We had an economy that was struggling. We've had we now have our major region, resource industry that uh, is struggling, and then in a position where COVID hits. So we got the the triple uh, the triple impact here. So for us, we see part of our recovery plan um, as ensuring that we can get to a point of stability which then leads us into a point of prosperity. So um, we in this industry are doing the exact same thing. We're being uh, honest and open with our potential partners that, that have projects for here on how we're going to engage. Uh, we're having consistent conversations at the national, provincial, and municipal levels um, and within the regions as to are we ready, uh, what do we need to implement so that everybody's safety is taken into consideration and the protocols are all in place so that we don't have a, a return or having to take steps back. Um, you know, what do we, uh, you know, the task forces that we're on, making sure that Alberta has a voice as they're making decisions across the country, as Heritage is distributing, you know, $500 million to these displaced workers. How do we ensure that Alberta uh, workers and, and, uh, and locations uh, get their fair share and are looked after? Um, doing uh, our advocacy work with the government. And um, I'll take this opportunity to talk about this because this is two-phased. We know very well that we're in a position in Alberta where um, asking government for money at this point is a very difficult thing. However, there is allocated funds for the film and television uh, industry for our incentives over the next three years. And potentially having an opportunity to uh, be creative on how that money is allocated when projects are certified, meaning that they would be certified in the year that they're actually collecting the money rather than certified the year that they apply, which will enable us to utilize that, that uh, pocket of money that we have um, in a much better way and really attract a lot of production right off the bat so we can get the industry going, start doing more hiring, creating a, a, a larger uh, capacity, which then will attract more work, which then gives more opportunities to all our regions and our, and our municipalities um, to engage in film and television and get some return on that provincial investment. 
the industry itself, um, as I said, was, was almost $300 million last year with an investment of $45 million from our provincial government. So the return is great there. There's also uh, studies that have been done across the country that identify that for every dollar that the provincial government um, puts into film and television, there is a dollar twenty that is returned to the provincial coffers. So not just our GDP and our investment in businesses and people across the province, but the actual return. So this is an industry where we do the work, uh, people are paid, businesses are paid, money is expended, an audit is done on all those expenditures presented to government on, in a certified manner, government reviews, and only then is that money returned, any of that, um, that incentive go back to the production company after we've seen that full cycle uh, take play. That is unique uh, for businesses and for investors in businesses to be in a position where they can see that flow, ensure that that it is going to the right locations and everybody's being taken care of before there is any engagement whatsoever that has a positive return in the long run um, to our government and to our, uh, our businesses and, and jurisdictions throughout the province. So we continue to work with that and, and attempting to ensure that uh, working closely with governments so that uh, we can ensure that that can happen. And then secondly, looking at what long term is like. I mean, um, as we are looking at uh, reinvigorating our economy, as we are looking at how innovation and technology is brought into uh, a more prominent role in our province and, and what that's going to do to, to help uh, our economy grow and develop um, and diversify uh, even further than it has, um, we are positioned very well as film and television and digital media in to be able to react in a, in a quick and effective manner that's going to hire and, and get good return on, on our investment. So we're looking at when we're going to be open for business. Obviously, we're in conversations right now with the provincial government as to where film and television fits in as far as our opening. And we would love to be in a position that we're looked upon in the, in the next round or two as opportunity. Uh, that then allows us to start looking at how we can um, start producing and, and, and generating um, that attention into uh, the marketplace and that we have, uh, we can go out and start selling. Obviously, our first priority uh, is always going to be the safety of our people working in the industry and, and those that we work with. Um, and then looking at what those opportunities are for attraction. Obviously, uh, not unlike what we're doing here, we're going to be doing a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of team calls uh, to begin with. Um, and also being very careful in how our borders are opened up uh, interprovincially and then internationally um, to folks coming in and, and out. And we just want to ensure we don't need to be the first, uh, but we want to ensure that the robustness of our plan is at a point where when we do open and we do activate that we're meeting the needs of everybody, starting with our local and moving it into the industry and that everybody's content with what they're going to be working within uh, when they get to, uh, to Alberta. So um, what we're trying to, uh, to do, and Rob um, brought this up and, and Lisa will speak to it, is become a film-friendly region. Uh, so implement uh, processes that are going to make it as easy as possible for people to want to be here, spend their money here, activate here, and leave behind as much uh, possible positive benefit as pos in the province. Um, and then having you know, uh, a big part of this is how we're perceived and seen uh, globally. And one of the areas that we've enhanced in the last little while, and I know Marla's on this call and has been uh, a significant impact on this, she's been the driver of this, is to have our resource and photo library in play. Um, so our real scout system is now, uh, you know, been populated with, I think, about 18,000 um, different photos from a huge amount of locations across the province, uh, um, south, northeast, west, um, trying to encompass all of those areas that people want to keep um, uh, uh, keep producing in and to show the diversity of our, our landscape. Um, so that's there. And Marla will work with, uh, with uh, the jurisdictions as well as uh, ind individuals who want to display uh, their area or their property or their, their houses or whatever they have infrastructure wise uh, and location wise for us to be able to showcase globally. Um, and then secondly, uh, what we'd like um, yeah, to do when um, when this is over is to um, is to send you links to to not only um, the real scout but also to keep Alberta rolling. 
which is an initiative that started um, about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, uh, by some young uh, filmmakers and, uh, and crew members here in Alberta, where they wanted to showcase the positives of our, of our industry and specifically showcasing the regions. So uh, they put together a link uh, for us today that we'll be able to share with you after um, this webinar is done that you'll be able to look at. And I think it, it does highlight very well on a couple of uh, locations that have had some very direct impact from film and television uh, over the years and up until recently. Um, and we'll uh, you know, give you an opportunity to see what those regions are saying and those areas are saying about the impact, um, the positive impact of film and television. And then um, lastly, I think, you know, uh, as we were able to come and speak to you today, I think one of the, the key things for us is to garner your support. Um, you know, this is an industry that has the capacity to have an effect on the entire province. You have some very dedicated craftspeople that work in this industry. You've got some dedicated people at the government level in Alberta Film and, and our ministries of um, multiculturalism, culture and uh, status women, as well as uh, economic development, trade and tourism uh, that are there to support film and TV. But I think, you know, for us now, for us to be able to take the next step, and to become even more globally competitive. We need to reach out to our partners across the province and ensure that you see the benefit of this industry and to do whatever we can uh, to bring you on board with us as, um, as partners, not just the regions that have uh, benefited from the industry to this point, but also the regions that have the opportunity as we grow this sector, they're going to be looking across this entire province of ours um, to find locations that are for those unique projects and for those, those unique locations. And it doesn't take a lot um, for it to be a major impact on, on those regions. And then for those regions to be seen globally as an area that had that project done or this project done, which then means more attractive. So we have some opportunities here. We're hoping um, that you're behind us in this industry and that we have, um, you know, as we move forward, that we can collaborate and uh, have everybody under the tent uh, as we, um, you know, increase the, the capacity and the, and the production capabilities in our province. And with that, I'm hoping to turn this over to Lisa now um, to have her talk a little bit about the permitting process, processes and how we can help with that. Yes, thank you, Luke. Hi, everyone. Um, I think between Luke and Rob, most of my points have have been covered off, but just to um, give a bit of perspective on the one window access, because I do think that's important. So we as the Calgary Film Commission provide one window access to all City of Calgary permits and approvals required for film and TV production. So this covers everything from still photography to commercials to feature films and series. And as Rob had pointed out, it makes life much easier for location managers if they have one point of contact in any given municipality that they can rely on to help them navigate permits and uh, make those community connections. Um, and as you saw in one of the earlier slides, the community can be quite impacted when a, especially the larger film productions come into town. So if the community is given enough advance notice of how their daily lives will be impacted during the time of the production in their area, it gives them some time to deal with any concerns that may come up. So it's the production's responsibility to communicate with the businesses and residents who will be impacted by the filming, but it's great if you can help them reach out to the appropriate people. For, for example, the location managers will share with us as the film commission their letters of filming notification. So this includes things like exactly what is happening and where, who they can connect with, um, if they have any questions. And we take that information and share it with all of our city and community stakeholders that should be made aware uh, of what's going on. Um, so we have established a film friendly principles and procedures with the city of Calgary that we are currently working through a refresh of. Um, for the permitting process. So we are gathering feedback from industry stakeholders um, and uh, just trying to get an idea of how they see the process um, 
improving from a production perspective and then we work with our city partners to try and implement those improvements where possible because we want to ensure that we're in a good position to accommodate the influx of requests that we anticipate will be coming um, as soon as it's safe for the industry to get back to work. So um, yeah, my last point was just on the real scout and, and Luke covered that off. Uh, all um, links and uh, contact information will be coming to you soon. So please do connect with us um, and we're happy to talk with you guys and anytime. That's me. That's great. Thanks, Lissa. If you want to stop sharing your screen when you get a chance. Sure. Um, thank you so much, uh, Luke, Robert, uh, Lisa, for, for sharing that. You know, it, it, I got to say, it's been pretty depressing every day having to watch news and say things are getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And finally, you start to feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's an opportunity here for our, our province, for so many businesses, for so many communities. Um, let's see, Nancy, is there anything specific that has come up on our questions so far? No, nothing specific. Nobody has uh, sent in any questions. I think that all of uh, the points have been covered really well. Um, and uh, I'm not seeing any questions or comments, but certainly inviting anyone to, if you have something to share, if you have a question, please just uh, send it to me in the uh, chat. Sorry, uh, just one, one addition to, uh, to Lissa's commentary, if I can. Um, Lissa is more than happy and, um, and we're more than happy to share um, across the province all of the information, all the details, all the forms, all of the things that we utilize that we have painstakingly put together <laughs> over the last, um, you know, 15 years. Uh, and adjusted accordingly pending, you know, based on how production has changed throughout the years. We are happy to share all of that information to anyone across the province and then walk through the processes so that they have a strong understanding so that when a production comes in, all of those pieces are in place for that specific area. Um, and if there's any, uh, you know, any concerns, anything that you need at that point, uh, I know that uh, that Josh's office in Edmonton, the Edmonton Screen Industries office and our office at Calgary Economic Development, as well as the, the Provincial uh, Film Commission office um, are all happy to try to help and, and ensure that the experience is as good as it possibly can with the least amount of work necessary to get there. So Luke, can you just explain from uh, just an organizational perspective? So if there's an Alberta Film Commission, there's regional uh, film commissioners as well. So Calgary has one, Edmonton has one, am I correct? Yeah, then, so there's three, there's three of us. And so are, then... Go ahead. Well, I'm just, just trying to understand. So say someone's interested in, in a location in Forma Cloud. How would mm -hmm. that... In, in, be processed from a community standpoint? So what will happen is that um, depending on where they reach out to first, so uh, sometimes they'll reach out to Alberta Films, sometimes they'll reach out to the Calgary Film Office, sometimes the Edmonton Film Office. What happens at that point is we have a conversation at that level regarding what's coming in, what their needs are. Most of the time is to ask questions prior to COVID was to ask questions about digital photo packages and, and scouting and those sort of things. And we work as, as a, you know, uh, the three of us to ensure those three offices to ensure that we know what's going on, that we have the wherewithal to meet the, the needs for that particular production, that we're having conversations with the regions that they're going to be coming into and those locations they're going to be coming into. We look after the cost of scouting, some hotels, some, um, some of the logistics that are necessary uh, for these productions to be here. Uh, we've reviewed all of the um, all of the materials that they've sent us, and then we work on having them on the ground. And then we bring them into the areas. We introduce them to the unions, the guilds, the associations. We introduce them to the the um, the specific uh, uh, areas that they're going into. So whether it's through chambers, through economic development, through whatever uh, exists within those areas. Um, and we make sure that those conversations get started, and then we're there for support once the project starts to go, because a lot of them will originate and stay within the major center and then um, allocate the crew as is necessary going out. Sometimes that means months at a time in a, in a smaller jurisdiction, utilizing the hotels and restaurants and stuff. Sometimes it's travel out, travel back. 
So we like to be ensuring that, that the film commissions, um, and I say commissions as a partnership, work uh, from start to finish with these productions to ensure that, um, that you're supported as, a, as an area and that they're supported from the film production perspective. I did get a question here in the chat. How much of a factor are tax credits in decision making and how competitive is Alberta? It is the core. Um, when we walk into uh, to any location, that will be the first question. Actually, now it will be the second question. The first question is how safe is your area? Um, how, how can we ensure that our A-list talent, which we can't have a production without, um, and our executives and those that we're bringing are going to be safe coming into your area? Number two question now is about incentives. So our incentives are... Um, have changed from a, a grant system for, or for uh, service production or foreign production have changed from a grant system into a tax credit system. And so that is under the economic development, trade and tourism. The grant system has been maintained for projects that are Alberta based that are below $500,000 um, in budget. And that is a, a grant application system that happens through culture, multiculturalism and status of, of women. Um, so those two uh, areas, those two ministries look after um, the incentives. What we have found is that although our incentives at 22% for uh, foreign production and 30% uh, for local production, local being Alberta based and owned production um, are competitive where we uh, run into some um, uh, uh, logistical uh, concerns in regards to our competitiveness would be when those productions are um, the larger base productions that go beyond our $10 million cap per project. So if we're competing with Ontario and British Columbia, for example, and it's a $100 million production that wants to come into our region, we will be limited to a $10 million uh, incentive to that production, whereas uh, locations like Ontario, Manitoba, uh, Quebec, and British Columbia will be in the 18 to $22 million worth of incentives. So um, when you're looking at the amount of production that's gonna happen and the amount of money that's being allocated uh, to, um, to whatever region they're going to, they're gonna go to where those incentives are going to give them the, the biggest bang for the buck. We have been lucky over the years where we've had the opportunity to have major productions that have what we call capped out, gone beyond our, our capacity. And that is for projects that have directors or producers like the Inarutus or like the Chris Nolans and such, who can really dictate um, at the studio level where they're going to go, whether there's the incent incentives to, to match or not. However, that being said, um, you know, when we talk about incentives, everything that is allocated as an incentive by our provincial government has to be spent in Alberta. We are what's called an all spend jurisdiction, which is what the majority of jurisdictions are globally now. And what that means is goods, services, and labor. And so for us, we want to ensure that they spend as much money here as possible and utilize as much of our labor base and our talent as possible. So their return is on their spend in Alberta. So there is, we're not allocating money to anything that's spent anywhere outside of the province, to people that are hired outside of the province. There is a federal tax credit that is the same for every province. That's at 16 for foreign production, 25% for, um, for Canadian production, that's just labor, that can be added on top of things. So we do not pay for anybody coming in from Ontario or from Los Angeles or uh, from Houston. It's, it's all about Alberta spend. So that outcome is where your return is. There's a question here. Um, how do we leverage the talent and graduates that the province is producing from um, uh, post-secondary institutions that offer the fully integrated film and theater and live entertainment degrees? Well, you know, whoever that is, I love you. Um, we've been talking a lot about this across the province. We have many post-secondary uh, schools here that generate um, more than 3,000 students a year or graduates a year that have a creative industries moniker uh, or uh, designation on their certificate um, or diploma. 
So those 3,000 students that um, we have put uh, significant millions of dollars into educating them as they have from their own pockets to be educated in, in the creative industries, we want to be able to ensure that we're increasing the opportunities to keep them home. Right now, um, you know, we cannot support at the level of, of production work across all of the disciplines, we cannot support that many new uh, entrants into this sector as we would like to be able to. So what we want to see happen is to mitigate that talent surge into other jurisdictions. So the, the British Columbia's, the Ontario's, the, the Manitobas, um, the Saskatchewan's uh, that have uh, very robust opportunities around creative industries in some areas that that we're trying to grow and develop and, and working with government to try to get there. Um, but we need to find a way as we're transitioning into a, a new innovative technologically laden environment, how we can uh, ensure that those talented younger folks and the mentors that are here that we want to keep in the province um, can join together uh, and, and create this this new base of talent in, uh, across the entire uh, the entire sector. So I think for us, we're working uh, diligently to identify the areas that we um, we hopefully will be uh, partnering and supported by the uh, the provincial government, and then looking at what opportunities lie here that are Alberta-based opportunities that we want to grow. So looking at those innovative ways to showcase our talent internationally, um, as well as, um, you know, the majority of them want to stay home when they come out. We're, Albertans are unique that way. You ask people that have been out of this province for many years working in this sector in other parts of the country, and the comments are always the same. Make it so that I can year work year round, pay my mortgages, take care of my family, do all those things, I'm home in a second. We have a lot of uh, opportunities here with our ability to look after your family in a, in a, in a great way. Um, our, our cost of living is, is low. All of those things that, that are attractive. And then culturally in this province, we have a rich history here that people want to be part of and they want their family to grow up as part of. So we're working diligently with government to try to identify those parts so that we can um, hopefully be able to, uh, to keep those folks home. Well, thanks, Luke. We've got three minutes left. So any closing comments, Lisa, Robert, Luke, that you want to leave everyone with? Or? Well, I think from our perspective, we're, we're hoping to be able to reach out to your, your groups and to, um, to talk to you about what we can do to, to help build our sector in your regions and how we can garner your support, um, either you know, uh, already or uh, make new friendships and relationships that we can garner support down the road. So that for us is a, is a core piece. We truly appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. I know that there's a, a lot of folks that, uh, that want your time and uh, having you allocate this time to us is extremely appreciative, uh, appreciated and we, uh, we don't take it lightly. So I hope this was informative and I hope that this uh, gives some opportunities uh, for thought around where we may be able to, uh, to work together.